I want to give you guys my list of 10 rookies that really stood out to me from this NFL season. I'm going to start off with C.J. Stroud. He had the greatest rookie season ever for a first-year quarterback. In the span of only one season, the Houston Texans went from the pits of despair to being a relevant team, winning the AFC South, which nobody thought they would be able to do, and winning a playoff game. C.J. Stroud, to me, he's already a top-five quarterback. And did you know that he finished ninth in MVP voting this year? At one point this season, he was an MVP candidate. Eventually, he started to come back down to earth a little bit, but he still played at an insanely efficient level. He had arguably the best touchdown to interception ratio in the league, 23 TDs, the five interceptions. He won offensive rookie of the year. So he definitely was a rookie that stood out to me from this season and probably everybody because I don't think anybody expected C.J. Stroud to play as well as what he did. Hell, I thought he was going to be a top 10 quarterback. Kim and Bryce Young, year one right out the gate, but I didn't think he would be playing like that. Like, it was unbelievable how well C.J. Stroud was playing. Puka Nakua. I didn't know who the hell this dude was before the season started. All I saw was his name on my fantasy football waiver wire. And I remember Brett Coleman talking about him during the drive process and how he was an underrated gym. And if he could stay healthy, he could really be a good receiver. So I said, you know what? Brett Coleman was talking about him. So I'm going to just pick him up. And this dude saved my fantasy football season. I had no receivers. If it wasn't for him and the other guy that I have on this list, my wide receiving core would have been absolutely pitiful. Puga Nakua, he led all rookies and receiving yards. He is a monster after the catch. It's like when he gets the ball, he turns into a damn running back. He's big. He's physical. He's a really good blocker. There are a good amount of people who also believe that Puka Nakua is going to overtake Cooper Cup for being the number one wide receiver in Sean McVay's offense. Cooper Cup, he struggled to stay healthy. His play kind of has been. It wasn't. It's not like he's had an insanely down year, but ever since he had that all-pro season, when he started to become a household name, he kind of hasn't been able to play up to that same level ever since. Puka Nakua, he has way better measurables, a way better athlete than Cooper Cup. Puka Nakua moving forward, to me, he's going to become a top five receiver. He's a good route runner. He gets open. He's damn near unstoppable after the catch. Puka Nakua is one of my favorite players in the league, and he was another rookie that stood out to me this season. Now, the next guy that I have on this list, he got robbed for a defensive player of the year. That's Devon Witherspoon. When you take a cornerback, top five, top ten in the draft, you're expecting instant impact, all pro caliber play, and that's what Seattle got out of the Devon Witherspoon this year. There were moments when... He gave up a couple of huge plays here and there, but I remember watching Seattle play the Cincinnati Bengals and their whole entire secondary getting destroyed by Jamar Chase until they put Devon Witherspoon on him, and Devon Witherspoon absolutely locked up Jamar Chase. I ain't hear Jamar Chase's name being called after they put Devon Witherspoon on him. Devon Witherspoon was not only great in coverage, but he also was utilized in a lot of different ways. They were sending him on blitzes. He's a great tackler, really physical. He has three sacks. He has a couple tackles for loss. Devon Witherspoon is everything that you want in the cornerback. Good in coverage, great in man-to-man -man co coverage, really good when it comes to chipping in on the run game. Most cornerbacks are scared to tackle. Devon Witherspoon, he loves to tackle. He loves being physical. That's part of his game. I thought he really was going to win Rookie of the Year. I was really surprised that Will Anderson won Rookie of the Year over him. But you also got to take into account that the Texans made it to the playoffs. They had more success than Seattle. And Seattle wasn't really talked about that much during the second half of the season because they went ice cold. And that's when the people who were talking so much and so highly about Devon Witherspoon during the first half of the season, they started to become quiet during the second half because nobody was really paying that much attention to Seattle. 
I truly believe that Devon Witherspoon got robbed for defensive player of the year. He should have won. And he was stuffing up the stat sheets. He had 79 tackles as a cornerback. I mean, there, there's nothing that Devon Witherspoon can't do. And he clamped up one of the best receivers in the game. Tank Dell was my favorite wide receiver coming out of last year's draft. If you guys have been tuned in with the podcast for at least the last year, you guys would know that Tank Dell was going to be one of the biggest steals from last year's NFL draft. And when I look at Tank Dell, I look at a wide receiver that is incredible at creating separation. He just knows how to get open. Everybody was saying, oh, look at his size. He's only 5'8", 5'9", 160-something pounds. It doesn't matter when you know how to get open. If he never would have got injured, which it was dumb that Houston even had him in that situation to get injured to begin with, because look how small he is. Why is he blocking on the goal line? It would have been way better and way smarter if you just put a bigger body receiver in that situation, especially if you knew that you were going to run the football. But if he would have played the whole entire season, he would have had just as good as numbers as what Puka Nakua had. He was on page for 1,400 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns. And he was a third-round pick. C.J. Stroud wanted Tank Dell. The Texans came up to him. And they was like, hey, man, like, who you want? He was like, man, y'all got to drop my boy Tank. And he was smart. C.J. Stroud is better at drafting wide receivers than what Bill Belichick was when he was with New England. Tank Dell, this is my favorite wide receiver in the NFL right now. And I am insanely biased towards him because he is from Florida, but I had him on, on my fantasy football team too. I ain't pick him up from the waiver. I actually drafted him because I was high on him. And I was like, there's no way this dude isn't going to get any playing time when his best friend's the quarterback. And the quarterback was the one who told the Texans to draft him. Plus he knows how to get open. When you know how to get open, it's hard to keep you off the field, despite how small you may be. And what was even more surprising to me was that he was lining up on the outside. I never thought that he would be playing outside receiver. I thought that he mainly would be stuck in the slot. And that tells you how good of a receiver he is. So Tank Dell is next up on this list. The next guy that I have, he was drafted after B. John Robinson. Many people were really surprised that the Lions drafted him. They said that it was a terrible decision, but it resulted in the Detroit Lions having one of the NFL's most explosive offenses this year. And him and David Montgomery were the best one-two punch in the NFL this year. He's Chris Johnson reincarnated. Instant acceleration every time he touches the football. He thinks... It's, it's crazy that Jameer Gibbs, he had so many big runs this year where it was just a small little crease. He got through it and all of a sudden he was off to the races. His instant start stop is ridiculous. And people compared him a lot to Alvin Kamara. I don't see Alvin Kamara. I get it that they have very similar skill sets. In terms of what they can do, catching the football out of the backfield, lining up as a wide receiver, which we didn't really see him do that much of. He definitely is a way more capable receiver than what he displayed this year. But he's way more Jamal Charles and Chris Johnson than me, although he's a way better catcher of the football than what any of those two guys were. But Jameer Gibbs, he, he's special. This dude is a freak, and he's one of my favorite players. He's going to be one of those guys that... I draft on all of my fantasy teams every single year because he can kill you in so many different ways. Jameer Gibbs was Jameer Gibbs and what we thought was a really bad pick turned out to be a great pick by the Detroit Lions. And I was really surprised that they ended up taking him. You know, I wasn't shocked per se, but I was more so surprised. I was just like, you know, they already got David Montgomery, so why are they going ahead and drafting him? It's like, it's not bad because he's not just a running back. He's a weapon. You feel me? But it's the fact that they made it work with him and David Montgomery, and they got both of those two guys a pretty good workload, and both of them were top 10 backs this season. Will Anderson, defensive rookie of the year, did he deserve it? I'm not going to say that he didn't, but I definitely would have picked Devon Witherspoon instead. But he had seven and a half sacks. He had 32 pressures. And when I watched Houston play, when he was healthy, 
He may not have always been getting to the quarterback and getting a lot of sacks, but he came damn near close to, and he also was a force against the run. He was really good against the run. You probably could say he was better against the run than he was against the pass in certain games. Will Anderson, look out for him in 2024. I expect him to be an all-pro. My expectations for him this upcoming season is going to be somewhere between 12 and 16 sacks, and he definitely is going to be in the running for a defensive player of the year. There's a reason why Houston traded up for him. They got a franchise QB, and they got a franchise pass rusher, which pass rushers are the second most important position in the game because nobody else affects the quarterback more than edge rushers. So although the decision to give him defensive rookie of the year was a little bit shocking to me, I don't think it was outrageous. Devon Witherspoon just had way more of a bigger impact with what he did against the run for Seattle, what he did in pass coverage, but it wasn't insanely outrageous. I just thought it was a bad decision. Sam Laporta is the second Detroit Lion that we have on this list. Normally when you draft these tight ends, they don't have the kinds of seasons as a rookie that Sam Laporta had. The tight end position is one of the hardest to make the transition from college to pro when you play because not only do you have to learn the routes and the terminologies that the receivers have to learn but you also have to learn the protections pass blocking run blocking Sam Laporter mastered all of that he damn near could have been an all pro he was a top three top five tight end this season who else could you say was better than Sam Laporter outside of Travis Kelsey and George Kittle and I, I may say that during the regular season, he was better than Travis Kelsey. Hell, he caught 10 touchdown passes during the regular season. Travis Kelsey looked washed. You normally don't see this kind of first year out of a guy as young as Sam Laporta. Normally, it takes tight ends three to four years in the league to produce anywhere close to the kind of stats that Sam Laporta put up as a rookie. He was insanely impressive to watch this year. Jalen Carter... Y'all know I love me some Mr. Hemothy Carter. He started out really strong this season. The first half of the season, not only did he look like defensive rookie of the year, but he also looked like he was a defensive player of the year candidate also. But during the second half, we didn't really hear his name being called as much, but he still finished with six sacks, which is insane as an interior defense alignment. When you can get a D tackle that can produce you six and more sacks consistently, that's a really good defensive lineman because you don't find a lot of D tackles that are really good at rushing the quarterback. That's why Jalen Carter went as high as what he did. He had two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery, and he also had a touchdown as well. I'm really excited to watch Jalen Carter's growth and development next season. I really believe he can become a more athletic version of Nadonic and Sue. This dude is a game wrecker. He's a game changer. And if he ends up reaching that potential that everybody saw in him when he was regarded as the best player in last year's draft, he's going to be scary. And him and Jordan Davis are Philly's D line next year with their new defensive coordinator, to Vic Vangio, that they could be some studs. Don Kincaid, you normally. Don't see two rookie tight ends slide it up the way Sam Laporta and Don Kincaid did. But Sam Laporta was good. Don Kincaid, he wasn't too far off. And he probably could have put up the same numbers that Sam Laporta did if he wasn't behind Dawson Knox for the first half of the season. Once Dawson Knox got injured, that's when Don Kincaid really stepped it up a notch. He got more targets. And he became... The second option in the passing game for Buffalo, other than Stephon Diggs. Yeah, you did have Davis, but Don Kincaid was really the go-to guy for Josh Allen on third down situations. He had 73 receptions for 673 receiving yards, two touchdowns. When he was coming out of Utah, he got a lot of Travis Kelsey comparisons. And I watched him a lot when he was playing at Utah he was not only their best tight end, but he was their best receiver. Anytime you're a tight end and you're your college team's best weapon on offense, you're a stud. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what we see out of Don Kincaid in year two. And lastly, I got Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is the only first round wide receiver that I have on this list. He may not have been as impressive as a guy like Jordan Addison, but 
He was way more consistent than any other rookie wideout not named Puka Nakua and Tank Dell. He was the second best option on the Ravens passing attack, not named Mark Andrews. And when Mark Andrews went down, he really became that number one option for Lamar. And this is on the receiving core that has Rashad Bateman, who also was a former number one pick, and OBJ. Zay Flowers really stepped up for the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson this season. Really electric after the catch. Also a really good deep threat. A little bit concerned about the off the field legal issues that he has going on. But hopefully that gets cleared up and he doesn't face any troubles from that. Because the future is bright for him in Baltimore. He could turn out to be the best wide receiver in the history of the Baltimore Ravens organization. They haven't really ever had an elite receiver. I can't recall the last time Baltimore had a true number one. Or somebody who you could say was elite receiver. Marquise Brown was really good, but he's a good number two. He's not really a, a Batman. Zay Flowers has proven that he can be that number one guy for you. You know, he may be 5'9", 180-something pounds, but he doesn't look like the smallest guy when he's on the field. He looks like he's pretty built, and he can take some pretty huge contact. Zay Flowers is the second wide receiver that I have on this list. And these are my standout rookies from the 2023-2024 NFL season. Let me know your comments down below. I know there's going to be some people that are going to be upset. I know people are going to be like, where's Rasheed Rice? Like, Rasheed Rice was really good, but it's like I only could put 10. So if I make an all-offense list of standout rookies, he definitely will be on there. I just feel Zay Flowers and Puka Nakua were, were better than Rasheed Rice, but... He's really good too.